bit. And I want to show a few pictures before we get into the notes. And again, this uh, looking at the pictures will help us uh, to make sense of the context as we read through the biblical passages. Uh, I found some of these uh, pictures that were helpful. We often hear about the, the bronze altar. And the altar that was used at the uh, uh, tabernacle was smaller than the one that was used at Solomon's court, which was uh, substantially larger. We'll, we'll look at those dimensions as we get a little further in our study. Uh, but this one here was a little bit smaller, and, and I think necessarily so, uh, so that it could be used for transport. Uh, you'll often hear about the horns of the altar, as you'll read throughout uh, certain biblical passages. And, of course, this is an artist's rendition of what these uh, corners would have looked like, and these would be uh, what were commonly understood as the horns of the altar. Blood was applied to this. Later on, uh, people could come and lay hold of the horns of the altar. Uh, there were pegs on the altar that were used for carrying uh, the altar because, again, remember that this was a, a portable unit. The, the tabernacle was, was used uh, 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 for worship, but it was, it was a portable unit. It had to trans be transported around during the 40 years uh, of the wilderness wanderings. And, uh, and then there's a screen that was used, and it came about halfway up the center here. If you'll notice, it's a screen right here. You can hardly see it. We'll look at it in the next one. And, uh, of course, uh, this I found actually on uh, the Internet. Uh, the, the, the person who put this up, I think, appropriately says, The preach approached the tabernacle by way of the brazen altar uh, where he offered the sacrifice for sin. One of the things we're going to look at in Leviticus 1 is that the offerer, who brought the sacrifice also uh, offered uh, would, would, would put the animal to death. And again, there was a certain shock value to this. Uh, it's one of the things we've talked about before, that if you were not uh, to some degree shocked uh, by the death and the blood and the, and the sacrifice of this animal, uh, then you missed it. Uh, you really didn't understand the value of the whole sacrificial system because it was designed to teach you that God is holy, and that if you were going to approach him, you were going to approach him with sacrifice. But this animal was designed to die in your place. It was very much designed to teach the idea of substitution and penalty. That this animal was going to bear the penalty that rightfully belonged to you. That the animal was going to die in your place. And uh, so he puts up here Leviticus 17.11 which says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your souls. And then he mentions that Jesus Christ became our perfect sacrifice. And then quotes John 1.29 in which John the Baptist saw Christ coming. And he turns around and he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And of course when everybody turned around they would not have seen a lamb. They would have seen the person of Jesus Christ, uh, the God-man, the theanthropic person. And, uh, and of course, all of the Old Testament sacrifices were simply symbols. They simply pointed to the reality of the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Uh, and these, uh, these sacrifices went on for nearly 1,400 years until the reality came, and this was the person of Christ. Here's another uh, artist's rendition of the bronze altar. Again, you notice uh, the horns here on the altar. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, there's a passage that uh, uh, alludes to the, uh, to, the, to the possibility that animals were tied here. Uh, again, you notice the uh, screen that was uh, about halfway up the center of the altar, the poles that were used for carrying. Uh, the fire would be underneath. They would place the animal parts on the top of the screen here, uh, which were burned. Here's another artist's rendition. Again, notice the horns here, uh, some of the instruments that were used, the basin, uh, again, the poles for carrying. Uh, there was a platform, most likely, that would have gone up so that the person, so that the priest could come up and attend to the sacrifice that was burning inside of the bronze altar. And over here, they show the tabernacle. Again, here's a, an artist's rendition, some of the instruments. And don't you know that this would have been uh, pretty messy? I mean, they show these priests here wearing these white garments, which is correct. But, you know, they're dealing with, uh, with burning ashes and coals. Anybody ever barbecued and not gotten their clothes dirty? I mean, I don't know anybody that has. 
Uh, but these guys dealt with this uh, day after day after day, and you one can imagine uh, blood on their clothes, uh, coals, ashes, uh, and you know here they show the, the ground red from the blood that would have been poured around uh, the base of the altar. Uh, so again, you know, the artist tried to capture some of the imagery. I don't think their garments would have been at that, quite that clean. I think that they would have been probably uh, more, more dirty, which would have been more real to life. Uh, here they show the priest as the one committing the sacrifice. But again, when we get to Leviticus 1, what we're going to look at is that the offerer himself uh, would have been the one offering uh, and putting the animal to death. And that's what we're going to look at when we get to Leviticus 1 is we're going to see that the offerer himself uh, was the one who put the animal to death. Uh, again, here's a, a picture of the tabernacle uh, with the courtyard. Uh, notice here they show the altar here, the bronze labor, which uh, the priest would have used to wash his hands and his feet before going into the tabernacle. And by the way, this courtyard here is what was used when, when the people came to offer sacrifice. Only the priests and the high priests were allowed inside of the tabernacle. Only they were allowed inside of the tabernacle. But the average Israelite, and, and, and this would have been at the center of the camp, the, the 12 camps of Israel would have camped around the tabernacle. This would have been at the very center of all of their camps. And so when they had come for daily sacrifice, they would have come through this a gate right here, and they would have entered into the courtyard. They would have entered into the courtyard, and they would have brought the sacrifice with them. Now, when they come into the courtyard, what's the very first thing they see? The bronze altar. And so as they're approaching God, as they're approaching the tabernacle, as they're approaching the holiness of God, the first thing that they would have seen was the bronze altar, which would say, sacrifice. That if you are going to approach a holy God, you must Come with sacrifice. And so from the very beginning, from the, when they entered into the very courtyard itself, the very first thing that they would have seen would have been the bronze altar. And it would have communicated something to them about the very character of God. It would have said something to them about the way that they approach God. By the way, the description of the, of the tabernacle and the courtyard and the whole process of approaching God was very specific. It was very specific. And, and, it, and it says that God will be approached on His terms, His way. Okay? And so it was very specific as to how one approached God. But again, I think that this uh, uh, picture here is pretty accurate. You notice the, 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 the acacia poles here that were used. Uh, one can see, again, this, this, just the way it's laid out. It would have been 150 feet by 75 feet here would have been the dimensions, and we'll talk about that some more. Here's another, uh, again, layout. And this would have been the entrance here. And again, coming in, and notice they got the priest over here, and then they have the high priest over here wearing his robe. But again, when they come in, the very first thing they would have seen would have been the bronze altar. And then the, the labor here, uh, the bronze labor, and then the tabernacle. So again, you know, they would have had this first image when they came into the tabernacle courtyard. By the way, when you read passages like in Psalm 100, where it talks about, where David says, how we enter into his courts with praise. It's this idea of entering into his courts, into this courtyard here, is the imagery. And often we read through those passages many times, and, and we lose uh, the historical cultural context uh, that, that, the, that, the, that the writer is writing from. And this is why it's so important that we understand the scripture from the time and the culture within which it was written because that language was very specific to them. It had meaning uh, to them in that time and that culture. <coughs> again, here's another image, another layout. Again, again, one coming into the entrance here, coming in with the sacrifice. Here's the bronze altar, the brazen labor. Uh, again, coming into the holy place. And then back here was the holy of holies. And so again, just get this imagery in your mind, because we're going to see this, and we're going to go over this a few more times, just so that you have this clearly in your head, okay? 